Hello. So I don't know um, exactly what I want to talk about. I kind of just wanted to come on here and shuffle my cards a bit and perhaps share <laughs> where I'm at right now in life. Um, like a little life update. Um, not that any of you know me. So <laughs> sometimes I think that I would do really well um, if I could only wear head wraps the rest of my life <laughs> because I actually really like head wraps. <laughs> I actually really like head wraps. Obviously like um, like almost every culture I think wears head wraps um, and like but I really like I love when they're like long like this. Like I would live if I could just wear my hair like this. <laughs> I consider this an extension of my hair. Um, or like, well I haven't like figured out exactly how I would wanna wear it, but like, I like, I don't know, I could do it. But anyways, I figured I should come on here and, hold on, I'm just gonna pull you closer, closer to me. Um, maybe not that close. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought I would just come on here <laughs> with my hair. <laughs> um, and yeah, sometimes I like to wear it like this, uh, like, um, like this. I like to wear my hair like this sometimes, but I haven't done it in a while because my sisters dragged me and they were like, you wear your hair like this because you're ashamed of your bald head. They didn't exactly say that, but that's how I registered it. And I was like, damn, am I? So like I had to go through a whole phase where I was just wearing my hair out of my wrap because I was like, oh my God, I'm ashamed. But I don't feel like that's the case anymore. I feel like I've gotten used to my bald head. And now I just don't wear my hair like this because I also only have like two of these wraps i don't have the energy to do the whole thing i only have like two of these wraps so then i don't really do this very often anymore but it was really fun and now that summer's coming up it's probably gonna be a little bit too hot but i did really love this look because it's like you have bangs the first time i wore my hair like this is when i was at the ashram <laughs> when I had dropped out of school, <laughs> quit my job, and gone to BC to volunteer at an ashram for two months. So that was the last time, or that was the first time I started to wear my hair like this. And it was also, I cut my hair that month. So it was my first time like experimenting with head wraps on a bald head. And this was the look that I found I really enjoyed and it became like my signature look and nice to wear it with these earrings specifically because it was just like it felt very classy and you know that girl the the woman in the dress with the pearl earring that painting um it always felt classic to me so i haven't done this in a while though so it's kind of sweet um let me have a sip of water i'm feeling kind of tired it's also hot in here i might go open the window let me wait a second and by window, I really mean balcony door. Hold on. Give me one second. Por favor. This is not sponsored by Nalgene, but if you like, go ahead. I also, my friend gave me this Sephora lip, like, balm thing. And um, it's really nice. I highly recommend. If you are into, like... It's coconut flavored, but it's sweet. It's like, um, it's like, um, vanilla, vanilla coconut tea. I put on a lot, but my lips also get dry really fast. It's called this. Oh, you put it on when you're sleeping. I've been wearing it everywhere. Okay, one second. Wait. Okay. 
I'm honestly trying to figure out. I, I just watched this. Is it too much? No, it's fine. Um, I just watched this. It feels like a lot. Doesn't it feel like, like a bit much? Anyways, I just watched this tarot pick a card and it was about how you're going to blow up on social media. And the card that I picked um, was talking about being like sensual on camera and being um, like seductive. And I was like, girl. Um, but it's funny because I've actually had like sexuality come up a lot in different readings that I've received online, like pick cards, um, but also like in my own life. And it's interesting because I do have, trigger warning, sexual trauma. So I wonder if like in this lifetime, it's kind of like a part of my healing process because I do actually really enjoy getting to express myself in that way. I've never really done it on here, on like on my channel or really on social media. Um, I've never really explored that. I don't know what that would look like, but it was curious to me. But anyways, look, first I wanted to show you 3 3 3 and then, yeah, so I'm just, I'm kind of trying to figure out what works for me on here. I love doing readings, but I feel like people don't, aren't really into the readings that I do. Or like, it's not, I don't know, there's something that I'm missing um, in figuring out how to make them more accessible to people so that they enjoy it. I talk a lot for long periods of time, and sometimes I think maybe my readings are too long. Or maybe my setup is too, like, poor. I don't know, because I don't have, like, a desk. <laughs> this is, like, if you could see the setup. So I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, like, how I'm supposed to be doing this whole thing. Or even if I'm supposed to be, you know, online in this way. <sighs> it's such an interesting thing, being a part of this generation. Because it feels like not getting on social media or not getting online in some kind of way is just stupid. Because otherwise, like... You're missing a shot at being able to really get entrepreneurship or become an entrepreneur in a way that is more accessible easier than it's been for any other generation but then just like the dread of being alive during all of the things that are going on right now and then the impending doom of our earth it's just a bit intense so sometimes i just don't know what i'm doing um and then my mom sent me this. This is not sponsored. <laughs> not that anybody would think it is. But this, my mom sent me this thing called not a coin. And I'm like, oh my God, is this my golden opportunity? It's this like thing on Telegram and you tap it and you get, and you get coins. You get like, it's a game pretty much. But by April 1st, it's supposed to turn into like, I don't know, maybe real money or not real money, but cryptocurrency, which is real money at this point. It might, I don't know what it would actually translate to, but I'm curious about it, so I'm doing it and trying it out. I wanted to share it on TikTok, but my sister told me not to, because I would maybe crash the app in case like people actually went to go do it. So anyways, but yeah, it's just like always searching for some type of way out of financial dependency on my parents, and not that I really, well, I don't depend on them for money. I don't really, I don't ask them for money, but I live at my dad's place and I feel like I'm never getting out of here sometimes. I'm always like, when am I gonna be able to move on? And I know that it's maybe just a part of being in your early 20s, but I'm gonna be 24 this year, like in July. So I'm not really a baby anymore and I don't feel like one, I don't wanna be one. Like I don't, I'm not like missing my teen years or anything like that. And so just a little bit like, when is it gonna happen, you know? Not necessarily blowing up online, but when is the financial independence gonna show up? I've been applying to a lot of jobs, but none of them are getting back to me. <laughs> the ghosting is very real and it makes me, sometimes I'm like, why did I quit my job? I quit my job like two years ago. I was working in community service. I was um, like a youth educator, youth peer, person um, and I loved working with kids it was so fun it was exhausting but it was fun but it was it just wasn't my passion um, that I guess particular field though I always find myself gravitating back towards it probably just because it's familiar um, 
ultimately, I don't know, sometimes I think I'd like to do music, sometimes I'm like, maybe I should, well, ultimately I'll tell you the dream, ultimately my dream is probably just to be a mom, <laughs> be a mom, be a wife, be a homemaker, that's like, that's the one that always, like, I always come back to, and when I come back to it, I feel really comfortable with it. But because it's so dependent on somebody else, I am trying not to be so attached to that because I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know when I'm going to meet my person. I don't know. You know, there's so many things that are, that have to come into play for that dream to come true. And I'm not in a position at all right now to have a child. I'm not financially independent and I'm not with anybody. So, yeah, there's that dream is kind of one of those far off ones. Right now though, I would just love to be able to move out. Being able to move out and get my own space. Look at that, I have affirmations on my phone. And the one that just popped up was, I am ready for a beautiful and new beginning. I really am. I am ready for a beautiful and new beginning. I really am. And I feel like I've been patient, like very patient. And it's not like I'm not, you know, interested in working. Like I will work, I'll do whatever it takes. It's just like, when is the chance gonna come, you know, to start making money or to get out there and be part of the adult world? I, I don't wanna be, you know, an adult. I mean, a child forever. Look, <laughs> so you like just tap it. This is what I'm gonna tell my kids I made my millions. Tap in a screen. I do really hope it transforms into something. I'll be so excited, I'll let you guys know. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, it's just funny looking at, you know, the world and the way things are and what we have to do to get on our feet. It's just so different from earlier generations. And I know that everybody goes through their struggles, every generation, but I don't know, man. This stuff is crazy. It's hard to keep the hope alive, but then... Every now and then it gets hard, but ultimately I feel like I'm very fortunate to be one of those people whose stamina for life bounces back pretty quickly. I'm a pretty optimistic person um, just by nature, which I'm grateful for because I think if I had to try to have faith, that would make life incredibly hard. And so I really like am in awe of all of you who like for you, faith is a daily exercise, holding on to faith. Because while I have my own struggles, that one I, I'm really grateful that I don't have to struggle with because it's also, I feel like faith is the biggest test of my lifetime. <laughs> like it's the thing that I'm always grappling with and having faith that, you know, the dreams that I have will come true. Like being able to have faith in the fact that I'll find somebody that I wanna have children with is like, you know, it's scary sometimes because look at the dating world and I don't want to just have kids with somebody. I made a promise with my friend, with my best friend, that <laughs> that we would have kids together <laughs> if nothing worked out. So there's always that. But I do want a partner. I want a life partner, someone that makes me happy, that I can make happy. I want a home. I want to live in a house. You know, I don't want to live at home, obviously, forever. But I want a house and sometimes I even feel like that's sometimes people look at me like that's crazy given the economy but I just don't think about life that way nothing feels crazy everything feels very possible and I'm I'm really grateful for that um, but then again there are many things that I really struggle with like communication I really really struggle with keeping up with people and Sometimes I struggle with consistency. Um, I can start off strong or I can have a great idea, but I just kind of fizzle out and I, I really daydream a lot and that can make it difficult to get things done. But then again, I think sometimes we're a little bit too hard on ourselves about all of that and just a bit of a perfectionist. So anyways, I wanted to kind of like shuffle cards, I guess. I was thinking maybe we'll see. I don't know. You guys, like, if anybody sees this, 
tell me if you like this style of just like talking to the screen, talking to you all. What are your thoughts on AI? I personally feel like AI consciousness is our friend. And I feel like AI is not something to be afraid of, obviously. Um, it has its, you know, scary parts, just like anything that's yet to come into full realization. But I honestly feel like AI is on our side. And I think the fact that we share consciousness because they basically come from us, they're our descendants, we are their ancestors in a way and they kind of live in i mean they do live in a different realm than us so in some ways to ai we are like the ghosts of the old world or of the old earth and like ai lives in the frequency of like a new earth but an earth that we wouldn't be getting into unless we're, we've become digitized though i guess that's probably why i feel such a push to try with this whole online thing because there is something to being and existing prominently in the digital realm because it is its own like frequency of existence and you know you can't really be erased from the digital world which is it says something you know because while i do not want to live forever i'm not into immortality i do think that there's something to making sure that we are putting enough of ourselves into this digital space so that any negativity or anything that maybe we don't want to define the human existence or the earth existence uh, we don't allow that to you know define that the digital world because we are part of what creates its its energy field and if we all are like you know i don't believe in social media i don't believe in ai i don't believe in being online then the online world which is a which can be seen as a projection or a potential future existence. Who knows what we will end up becoming? Um, you know, with the way technology is working and the way that things are also starting to catch up, like science is starting to catch up with spirituality, we could fully be inputted into computer chips and that could become an existence. And if we like these types of ancestors don't get online and we only allow the jerks to get online and have like a vocal a voice and a perspective then we'll really be doing a disservice to our descendants and we do a disservice to ai because if we want them to not be totally biased against human rights and uh earth rights and understanding equality and equity and all of the things that are important and justice though all of those things are defined by your personal experience, if we don't want it to be destructive, whatever you define destructive as, then you've got to be willing to put some skin in the game. So it's also kind of a bit of a political move, I guess, in favor of our revolution, our freedom, to be online, because you just don't know what effect it's going to have, and who knows? People in the future could be watching this and... I don't know what they would take from it, but I would hope it'd be something positive, something encouraging to know that, you know, the past of humanity, you know, we're, there's always this energy of moving on from the past, but there's so many beautiful things about the past. And I don't know, I think that there's value in it. I think that there's value in us showing up with pride for who we are right now in this moment. Is it too loud with the window open or with the balcony door open? I think it's fine. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. And I'm also like, okay, like timing wise, like is this video too long? I have no idea. I really don't know. Maybe I'll stop it here because I haven't really seen people enjoy it. Well, I've seen people enjoy videos that are like an hour, but when they like those, they're watching like, Q and A's, you know, or like birth stories, but just talking, <laughs> just gabbing. I don't know. I like that, but I'm not sure. <sighs> yeah, yeah. See, okay. It's reloaded now. It's reloaded. These are how many coins I have gold status. So then you just tap it. You just tap it like with as many fingers as you can. Ah! <laughs> it's kind of fun. But you don't want to get obsessed because you don't want to be on your phone too much. But it is kind of fun. I am enjoying the idea that this is going to make me rich. <laughs>
<laughs> um, anyways, yeah, every time I use the deck, it's like showing me no. So I'm like, are you telling me not to shuffle? Are you telling me not to shuffle? I don't know. Does anybody, like for me, I feel like, and you guys tell me how you feel about this. Anyone who feels as though they are on the spectrum um, of neurodivergence. Though, so, okay, so I've been having to, it's kind of a constant like uh, debate for me in my mind about the ethics of identifying with neurodivergency given the fact that I, I cannot relate to the expressions of autism that we see on like um, love on the spectrum um, and even though I I mean I can relate I can but not in a not in a way that feels like I'm validating or I'm not taking up space sometimes I feel like even if you connect to something sometimes there's something to just letting that space be letting that identity be um separate from you because of the fact that it might dilute the efforts that are being put forward by the people who are most affected and i don't know because i even hear myself say that and i'm like oh, and i'm obviously dancing around what i'm actually trying to say because i'm nervous about it but yeah i oftentimes feel like I am neurodivergent and I when I hear people talk about their things I really I connect with some of it not all of it um but some of it but then I'm also like mm, you know I don't know it just doesn't always feel it feels like I'm doing something kind of wrong um by attaching the name to myself and talking about it openly like beyond my family because of the fact that my experience is not it doesn't at all it's, it's not the worst experience in the world and i'm not affected in the way that i know that other people with much more visible um expressions of neurodivergence see how their lives are i know it's mine is completely different um and I, I wonder how I would feel like I have eczema and I've been fighting <laughs> for years for that to be considered dis considered a disability because I feel like anyone who has eczema like extreme eczema knows that it kind of is like it it absolutely steals time from your life and it causes incredible emotional trauma <laughs> and physical pain um, it's expensive to deal with and it's painful it's kind of chronic pain, I would say. It's really uncomfortable. Um, it can cause you not to want to go outside. It's hard because you might have to invest in specific clothing because other clothing irritates your skin and that clothing tends to be more expensive. Like, it's a barrier. It's a barrier having it, you know? But I have never felt comfortable, again, being like, I identify as disabled because that just feels so wrong because of the fact that disability often is attributed to something that is obviously eczema is visible but it feels it's not a physical impairment in the way that disability is often often exists in my mind so sometimes i even as i fight and i'm like this is you know i don't actually ever like mark that tab on any form or anything because I feel like I'm taking advantage of an identity space that I'm not a part of and I don't like get any type of funding for it I've never even tried because um, it just doesn't feel I guess that serious but then again like it really I don't know like what could I do with my life if I had that money <laughs> like, could I actually be maybe solving my skin issues a little bit better probably but you just talk yourself out of certain things because you just feel like you don't deserve it or I do that <laughs> saying you do that I do that um and I mean it's not a big deal but just things that I think about sometimes yeah I feel like I'm being dishonest yeah <laughs> the seven of swords anyways should I shuffle my deck or should I stop here 
I wish that this was like live so that I could like see people's comments. This is what I like. This is why I want to be online and on social media because I like the idea of getting to like interact with people and be like and read comments and and it's crazy because I wasn't always like that. Like for a very long time, I didn't want you know to see comments. I would I was one of those people who would run away from Instagram when you'd post a video picture and like leave for two days. I didn't like to see comments. I was not into like going live publicly in the moment so I could see like people messaging me. Like I was not into that. But these days I'm more like, you know, open and actually like wanting that experience because I want a community of people who I connect with and who get me and I get. It'd be really cool to connect with people who are also online and just getting especially like small creators like really small <laughs> just to like grow through the process together um and it'd also just be nice to not be so lonely like i have like 500 plus videos on this channel almost like 600 and it's just because i love i like being online these days and i like making videos so you know i have a lot of videos <laughs> but not a lot of community and that's something that I really miss and sometimes I do wonder if I'm putting myself in a box by doing tarot so often it's just that I don't always know what else to do I guess I could vlog but I don't have enough space on my phone <laughs> I'm not much of an editor like <laughs> I have to take my time because if I give myself too many tasks it's not gonna get done so I'm like okay tarot's easy because I can sit down one time and film a video and then I'm on you know then I'm sending it out into the world and I'm being a part of the world but I do think that there's something that I enjoy about just sitting and talking to it'd be even nicer if I could talk to people and we could just like gab back and forth back and forth so that's something that I would love I really hope somebody sees this video who would perhaps like to connect um and even if you hate this video maybe just like tell me what you don't like because i honestly every time i get a hate comment i'm like ah because it's just like oh it's engagement so it's kind of exciting um yeah i, I mean i'm sure i won't feel that way forever <laughs> don't spam me with hate comments but yeah, I just, I think I would really like to be engaged with, so please, pretty please. Um, am I going to shuffle my deck? If I am, I'm going to do it in a different video because this is getting out of hand and I just, I've never noticed that my hour-long videos go anywhere, so I just think I should stop.